And uh, just to add one more thought along those lines, uh, you're right that uh, that gold and silver would be you know ideal things to have on hand, actual coinage, uh, which folks are U.S. Mint produces what they call American eagles. They're, they're gold coins. There's also silver American eagles, um, and then there's also uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the term that they use for it, uh, numismatic currency. So it's uh, these are older coins. They're collectibles. Oftentimes they've been uh, they've already been circulated in currency. And uh, as a matter of fact, that's one layer of the preparedness that I have done for myself is I have uh, a very small, very humble reserve of gold coinage, but especially some silver coinage on hand. And if you're operating from a humble budget like, like I have myself, folks, keep in mind that there's what they call junk silver. Now, they call it that because it is older U.S. coinage. It's pre-1965 coinage like, like silver dollars, uh, even quarters and dimes. But pre-1965, those were, uh, those were made with 90% actual silver. And so that's why they call it, refer to it as junk silver, is because it's not .999 pure, but it is 90% pure silver. And uh, an awful lot of you, uh, if you're anything like, uh, like my, my folks at home, they have uh, a couple of huge, huge cans of, of coins, of change. Every time they've had change from a trip back from uh, a shopping trip, they pour it into these things, and they just seem to save it forever and ever. You might very well have a reserve of some 90% pure uh, junk silver, silver coinage, and you've been unaware of it. So look for pre-1965. And then you might also want to do a little homework and just verify that that particular coin actually is junk silver. But uh, what you need to understand about that is that silver today, uh, I think the spot price on silver is north of $36 an ounce. And so if you have a pre-1965 silver dollar, rather than being worth $1, which is what the face value is, that silver dollar might very well be worth something like 32 or $34 right now today and maybe worth more in the future. So please do a little work on that end because Nia is absolutely right. Paper dollars themselves might become worth almost nothing. Even if you have a thousand of them set aside in an emergency like this, chocolate or alcohol or nicotine might be worth more than those paper dollars. But very definitely some gold or some silver coinage will be worth quite a lot more than them and will be more easy to transact and barter with most definitely. So, Nia, once again, I talked for so long there, I sure apologize and I appreciate your patience. <laughs> no, not at all. You know, I was just thinking that it's super funny that you mentioned coins. My cousin and I, we were talking about that the other day, and I had no idea that he was somewhat of a amateur um, uh, kind of connoisseur of coins. Ah. And he was telling me all of this fascinating stuff about, you know, different types of coins and just how people never know what they have. Because a lot of our currency used to be pure copper or pure nickel or pure silver, like you were saying, and we've had pure gold coins and stuff like that. And a lot of us, or even coins that have been out of mint for a long time are worth, I mean, just huge amounts of money and uh they're worth a lot to people uh to people because you know they represent times and things like that that you know things were different but it's just it's so amazing so if anybody ever gets a chance to talk to uh someone who's knowledgeable about coins listen to them because they have just such a plethora of information and um it's fascinating because yes uh metal will is a great tool for bartering not just gold and silver, but things like copper and uh, aluminum, too. You know, it, has anybody seen the prices of copper? It's just outrageous. Copper is super expensive now, and uh, it's because, you know, people need it, and copper is useful for a great many things. So if you have some spare copper, you know, my dad, um, he's in AC repair and stuff like that, and he accumulates copper, and so... You know, he he gets to save it and stuff like that. So the little odds and ends, he gets to save. So I mean, that's a great a great thing to have on hand because copper, like I said, is always useful. It's a great conductor of like you know, and so it's very very good. 
Excellent points uh, uh, once again, Nia. And uh, it, it it truly has been my uh, my pleasure and privilege to to host you on the show. I'm so very thankful that you initiated our correspondence with that message, uh, talking about uh, preparedness and and that it would make a good show topic. Uh, I'm so thankful for that. And listeners out there, uh, I'm sure many of you have have so many ideas and experiences on this subject that that Nia and I have not had the opportunity to to cover today. And we hope that you'll share those ideas. Is with us, uh, Nia. As our closing uh, uh, thought here, if you have just a just a moment to to be able to express to any mother or father who's listening right now, any sister, any brother, any son or any daughter, why it's important that they should get started with their preparedness planning today. How how would you express that? I would probably I would probably express it in a way of catering to their emotions by telling them, you know, in all honesty and completely sincerely, I don't know what I would do without my family. And so if something happened and I were to survive for whatever reason and my family didn't, I would just be the most miserable person on this planet. So just keeping my family safe and making sure that they're aware is super important to me. Now, a lot of people, they don't want to, um, a lot of people think that it's a lot of hoo-ha and a lot of, you know, kind of people getting all hyped up about nothing and they, they think it's a lot of conspiracy theories. But what I have to tell you is, you know what, nobody ever thinks it's going to happen to them until it does. And our history has a way of proving that Things repeat themselves, and I am not totally closed off to the idea that these anything is possible, you know. And I think that people that aren't open to that it, are going to be in for a rude awakening at some point. And I think that it's important to appeal to your family if they don't agree with you, and and you know, in the sense of being prepared for certain events. I think that it's important to appeal to their better natures, appeal to them emotionally. What would you do if you didn't have your child or something like that or your husband or or whatnot around? How would you, you know, go through life? How would you prepare your children? How would you, you know, there's a whole wide way, you know, a wide variety of ways to explain to people. Just, again, it's all about appealing to them. And so I think that that's also important because, like I said, a lot of people, they just don't, um, they don't make themselves aware or they they hear about it and they they just brush it off and we're so used to our way of life that we've become blind to a lot of things a lot of issues and a lot of possibilities so i think that um by letting people know protect your loved ones protect your family protect your friends and protect yourself and uh do the right thing you know well, Nia, that it is so very well said, and just on, a, I guess, a personal note, I, I would like to thank you uh, not just for your interest uh, in the in the subject and, and sharing that with me via email uh, as a show topic, but I also want to thank you for the place of consciousness that you've been speaking from, and you've done a, a great deal of uh, uh, homework, if you will, uh, preparing even, you know, just for our show, for our discussion, and that's indicative to me of the place of consciousness that you come from. And you are working and you're investing your own time as a student in the field of medicine. Uh, you're a healer and you're working in that field and applying your own energies on a daily basis and then also your course of studies uh, to prepare for, for maybe another role in, in medicine as a, as a doctor. And it's uh, something that I want to thank you for, uh, uh, very much so that you've attributed your time and energy and resources. And you're out of your concern, uh, not just for your own family and friends, but for uh, your fellow uh, public in general, your, your, your fellow man, if you will, or humanity in, in whole. And so I thank you for that. And uh, we at the Crimson Pill wish you uh, the very, very best in the course of your studies as you continue in the field of medicine. And, uh, Nia, I just want to thank you again so much for being a part of the program. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And you know what? I really appreciate that. And I wanted to tell you guys something along the same lines. I, you know, I completely admire and respect what you guys do on a daily basis. I really, you know, it it just takes a lot to, you know, get the word out there, do what you're doing, have the kind of shows that you have, which I love, by the way. You, you guys have the best station. And um, I just... 
I'm just so impressed by what you guys do, and I want to thank you for your service to humanity and tell you that it's really important and that it does not go unacknowledged. So thank you. Well, Nia, thank you so very much. It's very kind of you to say, and I I appreciate uh, your sentiments so very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you've been listening to uh, our conversation with Nia Ruiz from Florida, uh, a a practicing professional in the field of medicine. We've been talking about preparedness. It is my hope that uh, on either this uh, Sunday's broadcast, again, Nia and I have pre-recorded this uh, in accordance with her availability and her schedule, uh, and yet it will be airing uh, t- uh, today when you're hearing this. It is Sunday, uh, July the 17th. It's my hope that Nia will be able to join us either uh, late in today's broadcast or maybe on uh, an upcoming broadcast to maybe field some calls and questions as we uh, continue a discussion of family preparedness uh, and hopefully have a chance to open the lines and hear from many of you as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, listening to today's program. And please remember, uh, we hope that this is just the beginning for you and your family, that you'll take advantage of the world at your fingertips via the Internet, many of the websites and resources that Nia and I have alluded to through the course of the program. And, ladies and gentlemen, if, if in fact, you still require some measure of motivation above and beyond what Nia has already provided, please remember, if you're not willing to to start in this path of preparedness for yourself, then please, please at the very least, do it for your family, for your friends, for any of your loved ones. Thanks again, folks, for listening to The Crimson Pill.